No, not bidding. You're purchasing, you're getting your tickets. Judy has those available that you can then pay for and take care of. Yes, Katie. All right. Yeah. So if you don't get them tonight, you get them on Sunday. So, absolutely. Bingo. B I N G O. All right. Thank you. All right. So, setting everything aside, and that's all of there on your announcement sheets. You can also find it on CSLGLV.org. You can also find it on social media on our Facebook page. So, now I would like to invite my beloved husband forward, who's going to do our invocation for us, Ed Ryan. Good evening. So, I invite everyone to close your eyes if you feel comfortable in doing so. And let's just take in a deep breath. And let it out. As we recognize in this moment that there is only one present here, one divine mind, one infinite spirit that we call God. And I know that in this moment, in every moment, there is only God. God is all there is and is an expression here and now as that loving presence that supports and stains all life. It is that peace that passes all understanding. It is that light that leads the way and is the truth of everyone here and everyone within the sound of my voice. For I know that we are all one that we are each individualized expressions of this eternal spirit, of this loving presence, of this peace. And we come together this evening to hear that call of God, to be open to that call of spirit, of knowing that the truth of who we are is that loving presence, is joy, and that that light of God resides at the core of each of our beings. And so we know in this moment to listen to that still small voice within. In those silent moments, to simply breathe, knowing that that breath is God in expression, that breath is that spirit and it is illuminating our lives. It is that divine spark that is the truth of who we are. And so as we listen for that still small voice, I know that the truth is always an expression and that we are completely guided to where we need to go. That God has made the way clear for us. And that in every moment, there is peace in the process and God's grace is unfolding in the most beautiful and magnificent ways in our lives. And so I give great thanks for knowing that we're all here together by divine appointment that we're all open and receptive and that we are willing to embark on this journey of spirit. And so with that gratitude in my heart, I simply let go and release my word into law, knowing that all is unfolding under the grace of God. All is well, and we just simply let it be. And so it is. I'm diving in Get ready 
my soul I'm diving in to the deepest kind of love to the sweetest kind of life get ready get ready my soul everything I've ever done and everything I've ever seen everything I've lost or won everything I've ever dreamed has brought me here to this present moment here to this new seeing life so clearly now get ready my soul I'm diving in get ready my soul I'm diving in to the deepest kind of love, to the sweetest kind of life. Get ready, get ready, my soul. Here I go Deeper, deeper, deeper than I've ever been before Here I go Closer, closer, closer to my sacred source I'm diving in Get ready My soul I'm diving in To the deepest kind of love To the sweetest kind of love Get ready, get ready, my soul. Get ready, get ready, my soul. Thank you, Justin.
Thank you, Eddie. <clears throat> are you warming up at all, or are you still chilly? I'm asking legitimately. Warming up a little bit, or are we still chilly? <laughs> chilly. All right. So um, tonight, I'm going to be talking about a whole body yes, and so what we're going to do is we're going to, um, in this moment, we're going to uh, give you a little prequel, if you will, um, with some audience participation, and hopefully this will help uh, us warm up. So, bring your hands together and let's rub them. Get some nice friction going. The faster you rub them, the more friction you're going to get, the warmer they're going to get. Starting to feel the warmth in your hands? All right, place one on the back of your neck and one on your forehead. Feel the warmth. Relax it, and one more time with your hands. Really get that heat going. Back of the neck and forehead. Okay. Next one, <clears throat> just light knuckles right on your sternum. Rub right on your sternum. And breathing in and out and relax it. One more time on your sternum. Next one, on your belly, you're going to go clockwise. So if you're looking down, you're going to go, you're going to start at your sternum, you're going to move to the left, down, around, and back up. Okay? So that's clockwise. And so you can make them small, right at your belly. And then you can do larger. your lower abdomen as well, and then small right at your belly, and lower abdomen as well. And then, and shake it off. All right. Now what I invite you to do now is just relax. Just feel your body getting a little bit heavier into your chair. You can still stay awake and present, but what I invite you to do is just allow your body to relax. And how are you feeling in this moment? A little bit better? Okay. So, there you are. <laughs> Reverend Doug asked for calisthenics. You got something else instead. You got a little bit of energy work going on instead. So raise the energy, raise the vibration, raise the temperature. All right. So this evening, um, or this year, we've been working here at Centers for Spiritual Living. We've been working with the idea of uh, values-based spiritual living. Values-based spiritual living. And the value that was chosen for December by the... Beloved, to put this whole program together was, or is integrity. It's integrity. And that's the value that we are working with this month here at the center, and approximately 140 centers worldwide are working with the same idea. And so when I was contemplating this word, it's something that has a lot of deep meaning for me, integrity, personal integrity. Um, it can be one of my trigger buttons um, if somebody challenges my integrity. Um, and so it's, it's an interesting word that I've been working with for quite a while. And so what I did in preparation for this month is I went to the dictionary and I looked as to see what was there because some of the outlines that were provided us um, 
are kind of scant, shall we say. <laughs> very, very, very loose guidelines. And so it's like, huh, all right, so we need to really dig into this and see what's here for us. So I went to the dictionary, and the very first definition was one that where most of us are really familiar with, and it is the quality of being honest and morally principled. The quality of being honest and morally principled. And so when we think about integrity, this is often the way we think about integrity. To have integrity is you're an honest person, you're a true person, you tell the truth, and you stand in moral principle, right? The second definition of integrity <clears throat> is being whole, being complete, being unified. Other words were unity, cohesion, um, in accordance with. These were all other words or synonyms for integrity, but it really is talking about being whole, being whole, being complete, being unified, recognizing the one's integrity, meaning like the pants have an integrity, meaning they don't have holes in them, right? Or this fabric has integrity because it doesn't have a hole in it. That it is whole, it is perfect, it is complete. It is a unified whole. And so what is it that we teach here, right? That all of us are whole, perfect, and complete. That there is only one, that one is God, this one is perfect, and this one is my life now. This is who I am. I am unified with the one. I am the one. I can never be separated from the one. For truly, there is only one life. One life, one love, one presence, one power. Simply one. And so when I was thinking about this, when, you, we, <clears throat> when we really look at this definition of integrity, meaning oneness or unity, when you think about this definition, if I'm living my life as much as I possibly can in a conscious awareness of my oneness with God and my oneness with everyone else, if I'm living in conscious awareness of my unity with my sisters and brothers and siblings, when I'm living in the idea of unity with all of life, with all of creation, that then includes all of the animals, the plant life, that includes Mother Earth herself, that includes the universe, that includes all of life and however we define life, sentient, non-sentient. But if I'm living, and so if I'm living in unity with that, or I'm living in oneness with that, and I keep my mind stayed there, I keep my ideas and my awareness stayed there, then that must then proceed living a life of honesty and moral principle. Because if I'm truly living in unity, if I'm truly living in my oneness, I'm, if I'm truly living in that space, then there is absolutely no way I could be out of integrity with my word, my thought, or my deed. Meaning, there's no way that I could then use my word to harm another, my thought to think of separation or judgment or discrimination, or my deed to harm anything or anyone, right? Because if I'm living in my unity, if I'm living in wholeness, if I'm living in that space, then what I recognize is that everyone I see out here, everyone I see out in the world, is me, is my beloved. Because we are one, there's only one life. The idea of the namaste, the divine in me, honors and recognizes the divine in you. And if that's true, I cannot possibly do anything to harm you and remain in integrity. There's no way. The integrity comes from the oneness. 
The integrity comes from the oneness. It's wrapped up in the oneness. It's a manifestation of the oneness. Does this make sense so far? Right? I can't possibly harm you. If I harmed you, then I would be harming myself. And why would I want to do that? How could I do that? If I'm truly loving my neighbor as myself, then everything I do has to be honest and morally principled. Otherwise, I'm simply harming myself. So there's some self-preservation in that. So it's standing in our integrity and allowing our oneness, our unity, then to guide how we move and how we act and how we show up in the world. And so um, the book of the month this month <clears throat> is by Ron Greer, and it's called If You Know Who You Are, You Will Know What to Do. If you know who you are, you'll know what to do. And in it, he writes this. <clears throat> Integrity is who you are at your most authentic. It is being true to the life for which you are created and to which you are being called. To live with integrity is to discern the values that matter and embody them. So again, it says, it is being true to the life for which you are created and to which you are being called. He further goes on to say, if we want to discover our genuine values, then we must look at how we live. If we want to discover our genuine values, we must look at how we want to live. So how are you living? How are you living? All right. So what I'd like to share with you is that <clears throat> as we look at what it is that we're valuing, and that's kind of what, the, what our values are driving. And if we want to uncover those, then we can look, one of the tools that we can use is we can look at how we prioritize our lives, how we prioritize the tasks in our lives, how we prioritize um, what it is that we do, what it is that we say yes to. Because we're talking about a full body yes tonight, a whole body yes. And so... <clears throat> There's this diagram here <clears throat> that frequently, approximately 80% of the time, most of us will do tasks based or um, be in the world based on urgency. Based on urgency. Not really what we value, but on urgency. And so <clears throat> the first quadrant is high urgency, high value. This is what we tend to do first. We tend to do these things in this category first. It's a high urgency, it's a high value thing. A high urgency, high value thing could be something like, oh, I don't know, paying the mortgage, right? Keeping the heat on. <laughs> so these could be high urgency, high value. Whatever it is, there's a high value for you <clears throat> There's a, there's a reward for you, or there's a consequence. There's usually some kind of a reward or consequence, one of the two. And there's an urgency about it. There's a time urgency about it, because if you don't do A, then B will happen. There's some kind of a consequence. Or if you do A, then you get B, C, D, and E, right? The reward. The next one that we tend to do most is high urgency, low value. High urgency, low value, these are things that we often are accountable to other people for. These are other people's expectations upon us. So while they might not have a super high value for us, there is a high urgency, but the high urgency is coming from somebody else. So an example of this is, for me anyway, um, 
sometimes getting my talk titles and my blurbs in so that we can make a poster. This is a, it's valuable, but in my realm of everything else that I get to do, that's a low value in terms of urgency for me, but it's a high urgency for somebody else especially when that beloved somebody else is going on vacation. <laughs> and, you know, now I need it for January and February. So that, it's not a super high urgency for me, but it's a high urgency for somebody else. So I need to make sure that I'm doing that for somebody else. So this high urgency, lower value, or just the high urgency category itself is full of I ought to, I should, I have to, I must. It's absolutely necessary that this be done. But it's really not usually filled with a whole lot of joy and a whole lot of compassion. It can be, but these areas aren't always filled with that because there's always a sense of urgency. It's like, okay, what's the next thing on my plate? All right, got that one done. What's the next thing on my plate? Got that one done. What's the next thing on my plate? rather than placing value on what you really choose and what you really desire to be doing. And so there's this urgency, there's this, this, this next, this next, this next, this next. I ought to, I have to, I must. And so what then that can do is that causes a sense of overwhelm. We're like, I am exhausted. I am tired. I have all this to do and I have to have it done by this date, and I am exhausted. And so when this happens, <clears throat> then what we tend to do is we tend to then default over here to this other category here called low urgency, low value. Low urgency, low value, scrolling through Facebook for three hours, watching the NCIS marathon, even though you've seen every single episode countless times, watching that all day long. Low urgency, low value, but you're giving your time to it because of the sense of overwhelm that's happening over here. Another low urgency, low value might be cleaning out that three, those 3,000 emails that you have just sitting there on the computer. Low urgency, low value, but, you know, I don't want to think about these other things right now, so let me default over here. Or cleaning out the closet, right? Those are all like, there's not a whole lot of priority to that. But everything else is just so overwhelming that I'm just going to go over here and do this. So the category that simply, or not simply, but that usually, that tends to get lost is this one. It's a low urgency but it's high value. And this is where our joy and our passion projects and our creative projects tend to live in this category for most of us. So if I have time after all this other stuff and I'm not overwhelmed and just vegging out in front of NCIS, then I'll get around to writing the children's book. Then I'll get around to knitting that scarf for a friend. Then I'll get around to whatever. Right? But this is where the joy and the passion tends to live. And what happens here is these things, two things usually happen with this category. They either don't get done <clears throat> or they get done when it becomes a high urgency thing when it becomes high urgency. So I'm working on a project right now that has been in a low urgency, higher value, but I now have a deadline. And now this deadline has created the high urgency, high value, where I want to get it done, I need to get it done, because I have a hard deadline of January 15th. So now it's gone from this category over here, over there. I've been working on it. I've gotten better with all this. I've been working on it. 
But now what's really kicked it into high gear is it's now high urgency, high value. And so <clears throat> what I want to share with you in addition to this is I want to share with you the whole body yes. And this comes from Jim Dethmer, uh, who is a wonderful consultant and church builder and church developer. And <clears throat> he calls it the whole body yes. And so the whole body yes helps us to identify those things that are in that top category, the high value, low urgency. It helps us identify those things, and it helps us say yes to those things and those things only. It helps us to prioritize what it is that we really want to be doing, what it is that we really want to be agreeing to, what it is that we are really willing to say yes to. Okay? So he talks about having three ways of making decisions, actually four ways of making decisions. <clears throat> The first way of making decisions or choices is we use our head. We use our head. So we use our logic. We make a decision solely based on logic. So what I want you to do in this moment is think about a decision you've made any time in your life where <clears throat> that decision came solely through your head. The decision was made solely logically. You made that decision completely logically. There was nothing else involved in it, just completely logically. Feel into that for a moment. Feel what that feels like in your body. And if you need to, you can rub your hands. and Feel what that feels like in your body. So what does it feel like in your body? A decision you made from your own head. What does that feel like, folks? Okay, good to Bobby. Not whole, something's missing. Katie, did you have something? It's a good feeling and it needs action. Okay, anybody else? Burden? Okay. Yes? Okay. Maybe because it was logical, it made sense, but it really wasn't what I wanted to do. Okay. So now I invite you to feel into your heart space. <clears throat> So your heart represents your emotions here. So thinking about, sorry, you have to use your brain for a little bit, but bring into mind or allow a decision or a choice that you made that was solely from your heart, solely an emotional decision, and allow that to come into your awareness. And feel it in your body. And what does that feel like to you? Pleasure? Joy? Excitement? Peace? It's more complete. All right. Connection. Okay. Good. Authentic. Okay. So now let's drop into your belly, drop into your gut. Your gut, your solar plexus, is where your instinct, your intuition tend to live in this area. So I want you to sense a decision or a choice that you made that was made from the gut of like, it's a, this is it, this is it. So sense into that. And feel that in your body. <laughs> Judy's head's freaking out, all right? What else does it feel like, yep. It's like, oh God, no, not that, oh 
okay, fine, right? What else does it feel like? Safety? A little scary? Freedom? Alignment, in alignment. Mm -hmm. okay. So each one of these by themselves has <clears throat> an appropriate time and an appropriate place. And we should listen to each one and be aware of each one. Right? Because sometimes something you just need to make the logical choice. When you're presented with a couple of options, you just need to make the logical choice. Right? There are times when the logical choice, that's what you have to make. Right? And there are times when that emotional choice, everybody kind of gave us lovely, warm, fuzzy feelings when you were sharing what your emotional choices were about. But, you know, there's also that like, oh, I'm in love with him, or I'm in love with her. And I'm having red flags go off in my belly like crazy. And I'm having red flags going off in my head because, like, I can see that this is not going to end well. But I love him. Right? There's that emotional piece. Right? And then there's the gut piece. The gut piece tends to be, it can be, as was mentioned over here, a little scary. But yet it's also freeing. It can be a little like, woo, Like, Wow. So for me, <clears throat> an example of a gut piece, or a gut instinct, was moving to Las Vegas. I didn't know why. I didn't know why I needed to be here. I'm like, it's Las Vegas. I'm happy in Seattle. Why do I need to be in Las Vegas? But my gut was telling me I needed to be in Las Vegas. Every time I've made a career choice or a career change, it's been my gut. And it's been that this is it. And once that decision is made or once that choice is made within the this is it, then it's just a matter of time and space catching up to that decision or that choice for me personally. But a full body yes, a full body yes incorporates all three of those. And so what Jim Dethmer says is... <clears throat> You make a choice that your head says yes to, that your heart says yes to, and that your gut says yes to. And if any one of those three centers says no, it's a no. If any one of them says no, it's a no. So what I invite you to do in this moment is to see if you can feel into a decision that you made or a choice that you've made in your life that was a full body yes. Your head was on board, your heart was on board, and your instinct, your gut was on board. That's fine. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. It's a full body yes. What does that feel like? Good? Scary, exciting, freeing, and what else? Complete. Anybody else? So for me, my full body yes, my most recent full body yes, was marrying Ed. I had a full body yes in 2011. He finally had a full body yes in 2013. So, <laughs> But it was a full body yes for me in 2011. Another full body yes was going to ministerial school and becoming a minister. That happened back in 2009 when I got that full body yes. And that was an instinctual, oh, holy everything. Right? Wow. Wow when I heard that particular call. Talk about scary. 
I know Reverend Doug's mentioned it. It's like if there was anything else we could do, then, you know, and they tell us every day in ministerial school, if there's anything else you can do, go do it. Um, but it's amazing. And to be living this life, this full body, yes, and saying yes to that and saying yes to life, then everything becomes prioritized around that. And so then where, when you're living from that full body, yes, the whole body, yes, then you tend to be up there in that green zone that is the high value, what's of high value to you. It might not be low, it might still be a low urgency, but now there's this high, high value where now that becomes the priority. We're living from values. We're living from that value, what it is that we're valuing. We're living from that place. And when we're living from that place, then it's easier to keep all of our other agreements. Because if I'm saying yes to my relationship with my beloved, then it's much easier to keep my re agreements here. Because that's a full body yes. I'm all in on that one. When I think about ministry for me, that's a full body yes. And so it's much easier to keep the agreements I make within my ministry and how that unfolds. Because it's now a priority. Because it's a full body yes. And so what I can do then is on my calendar, I can pencil it in if I need to. I make the time for it or I create the time and space for it so that it now becomes a priority. So now I'm living from a place of creativity. I'm living from a place of joy. And I'm living in oneness with what it is that I value. I'm living in unity with what it is that I value. And then that then spills out into every relationship. Because now I have a full body yes, so that then clearly tells me what I'm willing to say yes to, what I'm willing to give my time to, and what I need to say no to. Or what I choose to say no to. And hear this. <clears throat> no is a complete answer. And it can mean a yes to yourself as well. But no is a complete answer. That's it. No. I mean, don't be cruel about it, but have some sympathy and some compassion around it, but no is a complete answer. So knowing what is a full body no is just as important as knowing what is a full body yes. And so to know what is a full body no, go through that same process that we just did, but instead of a, full instead of a yes, when was it a no? When was it a no? When was it a no? There was an event that I was invited to um, a couple months ago now, that I did not want to go to. I did not. Logically, I knew that, no, this is not for me. My heart was like, uh-uh, this is not good either. And my gut was like, oh, hell no. Right? It was a full body no. I win anyway. You know that little people-pleasing thing that I know I have sometimes, and maybe I'm the only one in the room that has that? Um, I didn't want to hurt this friend's feelings. So I agreed. I said yes. We weren't going to the event together, but it would be very obvious if I was not at the event. And so I showed up, and there were a couple other friends with me, and five minutes in, my body was shaking. I was like, I got to get out of here. This, this is not okay with me. You've got to find a way to get out, Jeffrey. This is just not okay. I was like, no, no, no. Five more minutes, five more minutes, five more minutes. Started getting nauseous and was ready to throw up. I'm like, all right. Mind over matter. No, that's not going to work today either. I need to remove myself because what I was feeling in my body is I was so out of integrity with who I am, with why I walk the planet, with 
my very essence. And so I turned to the friend next to me. I said, are you ready to go? And they were like, uh-huh. And I was like, let's go. And we left. Graciously said thank you, but we left. So knowing your full body no and listening to it is just as important as knowing your full body yes and listening to it. Because as he said, as Ron Greer said, integrity is being true to the life for which you are created and to the life to which you are being called. And so it is. So I invite our beloveds who are in service to come forward with the baskets, and I invite <clears throat> you um, to prepare your gifts. There's green cards in the back, there's envelopes there. And I invite you to choose what you're, or to hold what you're choosing to give this evening near your heart space and give it a silent blessing. Imbuing it with a full body yes as you give and release it into the basket. And so it is. I will surrender to my greatest, highest good. I will release any fear that blocks my way. For every step I take, is taken with pure faith and I am stronger every moment every day my mind is willing and my heart is open wide I trust my instincts and let spirit my guide I vow to live a life that's real and pure and free as I continue walking in this mystery there may be in my way but I can choose to take a higher path each day and now I know that what I thought was safe and sound was only habit and regret that held me I will surrender to my greatest, highest good. I will release any fear that blocks my way. For every step I take is taken in pure faith. And I am stronger every moment, every day. And I am wiser every moment, every day. I will surrender every moment.
so let's come together in consciousness. Right here and right now, I recognize that there is only one, one infinite eternal beingness, one life, one love, one power, one presence. This one I simply call God. But God is all that there is. It is the absolute. And in this, there is unity, because there is no other. There is only one. And therefore, within this unity, there is a great diversity, but yet it still remains one. One life in an infinitude of expression. But it's one life. And it is this life that I recognize. This life that I recognize as my own. That I am one with the one. That the who of who I am is the I am that I am. That I am the power and the presence of love, of life, made manifest here and now. That the entirety of my being is in alignment and in a unified oneness, a conscious union with this one, with God, as God. And as I recognize this for myself, I recognize this for all of life, for all of creation, for everyone sitting in this room, for everyone around planet Earth, and for all life throughout the entire universe. Simply, there is only one, and it is the presence of love. And so I speak my word here and now in complete integrity, complete conscious union, an awareness of my conscious union with and as the one. I recognize my sisters, my brothers, my siblings in life. I recognize them as my neighbor, as myself. Seeing that there is no other, therefore I know that Every word I speak, every thought I think, every deed I perform, every action I take is in integrity, is in love, is in wholeness, completeness, and absolute perfection. For I live my life in integrity. I live my life in conscious union with and as the one I see it in all of my beloveds. I recognize the who of who each is. For they are me. They are the divine. They are God. The one life itself. And I give thanks for this realization. I give thanks for the love and the life and the power and the presence that simply is. And I release this word into the law, knowing that it is absolutely fulfilled. I let it be. And so it is. Amen. Show me 